hello hello so welcome slash welcome back to my channel for all of you new people my name is Katie and I will be your hostess for the day just kidding not at a restaurant this is a video anyway my name is Katie and welcome to my channel so today in this video one of you guys request I can't talk so today in this video one of you guys requested that I do a do-it-yourself room decor video and I know it's been a couple weeks since she requested it but I'm following through now I had another video to make and I was still working on a different video which will be posted next week so many videos also something cool I'm going to Salem slash Boston next week and I will for sure post some videos slash pictures onto my channel for you guys to see that so today in this video I came up with slash found quite a few ideas not all of these are mine, I will give credit to whoever came up with them on Pinterest slash anywhere on the internet, but there were a couple I came up with myself, so I hope you guys find these to be really easy. It's really simple. All you need to do is go to a craft store like Hobby Lobby, and something that can just be found at Target or Walmart. These really don't take very long to make at all, so these should be super easy, and if you guys make any of these at home or have any of your own ideas, be sure to comment and tag me on Instagram. If anyone tags me in a picture that I mentioned from one of my videos, I know last video I mentioned hairstyles, this one it's gonna be room decor, so if you tag me, I will be sure to give you a shout out on my account. The sun really just keeps screwing with my camera footage. Like, it keeps getting brighter and then the clouds will come over and then it just gets dark again and then my brightness just totally goes out of whack on my camera. So I'm really sorry if everything just seems kind of either super bright or super dark. I've been really trying to work with it but can't really control mother nature as much as I would like to try. Honestly, I'm hoping it rains later. Fun fact about me guys, I love the rain. Enough rambling, I realize I ramble in like every video. Really sorry about that. Also, if you guys are having any kind of problems with anything, you can contact me at any time, email me, send me a DM on Instagram, anything like that. I, there the sun goes again. Do you freaking see this guys? Okay, so feel free to DM me, email me, anything like that. I post my contact info down below in the bio, so if you just want to talk to someone without judgment or anything like that, and sometimes I give some good advice, I'm here for you guys. Alright, so on with the video. Here is some do-it-yourself room decor ideas. So for this I'm going to need large seashells, glitter, and a painting sponge. So I'm just going to take the silver glitter and put it all over the seashell using the sponge. You could also use a paintbrush but I find the sponge to be easier in getting the glitter all over. And this just makes the shells really glistening and shiny. So after this, I'm going to take the white glitter, pour some in, and spread this on top of the silver glitter after it's dried. This just adds extra shimmer and glistening to the shells and gives this this really pretty mermaidy, oceany, glistening look. So you could be done after that, and you could see all the shine. However, if you want, you can take these stick-on beads, and I'm going to put the biggest one in the middle, and then two smaller ones on each side, and then two smaller ones on each side of that. And I think this is just really pretty, and here is the finished look, so you can use these to hold jewelry or anything else small that you would like to hold. For this, I'm going to need a mason jar, white paint, blue paint, and some paint brushes. Oh, and a unicorn stencil you can find online, and some glitter. So I'm just going to take the jar and paint it white. You could use any color you want, but for this 
jar look, I'm going to use white. So then after that side's dry, flip it over and put the unicorn stencil on that side and carefully paint over it with the white paint. You don't want to use tape or anything to stick it on because then it's going to mess up the look and be hard to peel off. So after you add a couple coats, this is my second coat. I only use two coats, but if you need to, depending on the thickness of the paint, use more than two. And now I'm just going to peel the stencil off. And it's not going to look perfect, but that's okay because we're still going to paint in the unicorn with this pretty blue color. And again, you could use whatever color you want, but I'm using this light blue color. So I'm just going to carefully paint over and speed it up a little bit because this does take a little bit and there has to be some kind of precision, which is why I'm using a smaller brush. And you're also going to want to add a couple extra coats for this paint as well, just to make it really thick and not any see-through parts. Now I'm just going to take this white glitter I used for the shells and pour some onto the unicorn and then use a paintbrush to paint over the unicorn with the glitter glue. And this just adds this magical unicorn sparkly effect. And as you can see, here it is all shiny. And if you would like, you can add some more glitter to the lid of the jar if you're going to be using the lid. So here's the finished look, guys. I'm putting my unicorn makeup brushes in this jar because it's fitting and I was out of room in my other jar. burlap ribbon and a plant jar. I'm using my cactus plant. It's a coral cactus and I love it. So I'm just going to take the burlap ribbon and wrap it all around the pot. Then when I reach the end, I'm just going to cut it off and then I'm going to glue that with a hot glue gun onto the pot. Then I'm just going to go around and glue any pieces that are sticking out. And then I'm just cutting around the top edges that is hanging off. Or that are hanging off, I should say. I'm sorry. And simple as that. Here is the finished look of this decor. This one is super simple. It doesn't take much time, but it really looks nice. <laughs> So for this you're either going to need a macrame ring or thick wire. I'm using wire because I couldn't get a ring. And then wooden beads and yarn. You could use any color you want but I'm using gray. So since I couldn't find a macrame ring I'm using this thick wire and I'm just going to glue it together into a circle. Then using the yarn I am going to tie a piece at the top. And then after a longer length, I'm going to cut it off with scissors. So I'm just going to repeat this 10 more times so there will be a total of 11 pieces of string tied to the top of this ring.
Then after I'm done with that, I'm going to tie each piece of yarn to the bottom of the ring. Really make sure you space these out pretty evenly. It doesn't have to be perfect, but try to make it as close as possible. After you're done, take the pieces at the top and slide them together so they're bunched right up at the top while leaving the bottom pieces spaced out. And then just cut off any extra string. Make sure to leave a little bit at the top though. And then I'm just going to cut the pieces, making the middle one the longest, and then getting shorter with each piece of yarn after that, as you can see. Then I'm going to add some glue and stick the beads to the bottom of the middle yarn. And I tried to find wooden beads with holes in them, but I couldn't, which is why I'm gluing them on. If you can find them with holes, then all you have to do is tie them to the bottom. So I'm putting two in the middle, and then I'm skipping a piece of yarn on each side, and then I'm adding one bead to the next ones, skipping again, and then adding two beads to the next ones and skipping the end pieces of yarn. Then I'm just going to take and tie another piece of yarn around the top strings kind of hanging out there and make a loop so this hooks onto a nail in the wall. Then hang it up, and here you have the modern dream catcher. So this decoration doesn't really require a tutorial, but I'm just going to share it with you because this is what I have on my closet in my room, and I think it's super neat. I just found a bunch of pictures online that I really liked and quotes and things like that, and then I printed them off, cut them out, and then I just taped them to my closet door, and this really just looks super cute, and it adds sort of my personality to an empty wall space. And if you notice the quote I had up there about autism, that's because my younger brother has autism, and he is just amazing, and I have that up there to kind of just support him, and he is such a big part of my life. So for this I'm going to need some smaller seashells, wire, and a hot glue gun. This wire is copper and it's a lot thinner than the wire I used for the dream catcher. So I'm just going to wrap it around my hand and create kind of this circular base and then take the end and twist it around just to secure it. Then I'm going to extend the wire to the middle and create a 90 degree angle type of curve into the wire. Then moving up, I'm going to bend some pieces of wire out and then bend them back in to create branches because this is kind of like a seashell tree type of thing. So I'm just going to create branches and then move up and make more branches. And make sure you make these face different directions because it'll look a little awkward if they're all facing the same direction. As this is supposed to look like a tree. So once you've got it to whatever height you want, just cut the end off and then bend it in at the top.
Then what I'm going to do is take smaller pieces of wire and wrap them around the branches to connect them to the main part of the tree. And as you can see, this really just connects everything and adds stability to the branches. So next I'm taking a seashell and adding a little bit of hot glue to it. And then I'm going to attach a seashell to the end of each branch. one at the top of the tree as well kind of like a star like on the Christmas tree. Then I'm going to take more wire and wrap it around the base of the tree several times very tightly just so it adds a ton more stability and it's thicker so it can hold on its own and this is what it should look like at the end and you can add this two or three more times so it's really stable. Then taking a lid, I'm sorry I forgot to add this in materials you would need, but I'm going to take a lid and glue it to that so it's sort of a base for the tree. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. And I like to put earrings in here or very small things. I'm using different sized cans, a marble printout, and a hot glue gun. So I'm just taking the printout and wrapping it around the can. And once I cut some of the excess top off, I'm just going to use a marker to draw a line around the top edge of the can so I know where to cut. So after I cut that, I'm just going to go around the bottom and add hot glue and glue the bottom pieces to the can. And simple as that, that's all you have to do. And now you have this really cool, classy marble look for your cans. So for this I'm using two packages of black polymer clay and a package of white polymer clay, a bobby pin, and gray yarn again. So I'm just going to take all the pieces and compress them into smaller balls. This may take a while as this is very hard clay. So after I have them into balls, I'm going to take some pieces of the white and add it to the black. The more white pieces and the bigger pieces, the more white is going to be in this marble look, while the less white, the less white there's going to be in the marble look. So I really changed it up for each ball and try to create a different marbly type of look for each one. So then after you add the white, just mix it around and then you'll have these different marbly looks. Again, this may take a little bit because the clay is very hard. So then I'm going to take a knife. You could use a cookie cutter, but if you don't have one, just take a knife and create these moon shapes. So one side is going to be part of the moon and the other side will be the other part. So you really only need four pieces to create all the phases of the moon. Then I'm going to divide one in half.
and then leave one hole. Then I'm going to take at the top of each piece, put a hole with the bobby pin. And make sure each piece is oriented to how you're going to want to hang them. Then preheat the oven to 300 degrees or however much the packaging says for your clay. And then put them in the oven and here you are. I put them in the oven for about 30 minutes, but depending on what the package says, you may have to make that different. So then I'm going to come from behind, put the yarn in front, and then take a ton and spread it all out because you're going to need to spread this yarn across all the pieces. And then just tie it at the top. and let a little bit hang down from the bottom. Then I'm just going to go around and go through each piece the same way. Make sure you go from behind and then into the front and tie it that way, otherwise it's going to hang in a really odd way. Trust me, I try to do this several times to figure it out. There you have it guys! Thanks guys for watching this video. I hope you found this to be super helpful and I hope the person who requested it is able to watch this and get some nice tips and ideas. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands right now, it's just kind of happening. So uh, be sure to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. If you have any suggestions or wishes for new videos, be sure to comment below because I do take those into consideration. As you can see, this one was a requested video. So yeah guys, alright, well I will see you soon, bye bye.